few words about me. I'm a UX uh, strategist from Divanta. Uh, we are based in Poland, Wrocław, the exotic word. Uh, southwest of Poland, this is a big city. We are doing Magento e commerce there, or Magento, as here in uh, the Netherlands you would say. That's Magento. Uh, and uh, we are designing, we're doing end-to-end -end products, like from the very beginning, from the design uh, phase to the launch phase, we're doing uh, e-commerces. But we'll talk about websites today, not about e-commerces. Uh, how many of you manage a website here? Yeah? Here you, is the website responsive? A bit. A bit, like what range? Depends what? on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> what's about my phone? What, what, what's what's the resolution <laughs> range that this is responsible for? The website. You, you, you don't know that? That one. <laughs> up to? Uh, up to that one. HD? <laughs> That's how far I've tested it. Okay. <laughs> MacBook Air to iPhone 6. Okay. That's the range. Great. And yours? Here? What's the range of the resolution? Yeah, like uh, 1200 pixels to your free time. Whatever okay. your bootstrap does. Excuse me? <laughs> 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 Sorry about this doesn't. It's not working. But I can do it right here. Okay, so it's 2016 and it's probably time to, if, if your website is not responsive and you're thinking if to make your website responsive, no, it's the question of when. Not if, because this is obvious and this is a must that your uh, website should be responsive. Uh, how many apps do you have installed on your smartphone? No clue. Five. 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 <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, the average for 2014 is uh, over 26, and as you can see, the number is, is not getting bigger year by year. I don't have the data from 2015, but I suppose the number of average uh, app, you, app installed per person is, is not getting bigger. But the time that people are actually spending on using them gets bigger and bigger. And in 2014, the time has went up by 62% compared to uh, 2012. Uh, yeah. Uh, the biggest barrier for the apps is to getting people to install them on their smartphones. This is like uh, 60 or 70 percent of the budget of the whole budget is going to get the people to get to know your product. This might be frustrating, especially for people who are making these apps. Uh, but I think that there is no need actually for this because may many um, Many retailers or many many companies who want to have their own app, actually there is no need for this. They don't really have to have an app. This is just, they just want to. Uh, do I need to explain what responsive web design actually is? I think, just to be clear, I will. Uh, a responsive web design is a, a responsive website. is a website that adapts to the screen resolution so that you as a user don't have to pan or zoom or resize it with your fingers and you can use easily the content. So uh, that's basically it. This is not very uh, hard to imagine. And there are many advantages of uh, responsive web design. One of it is that the, the RWD website is good for every device screen. Uh, for, for every sizes, every one of the sizes of the resolutions. Um, Google has announced that they have made about, well, they didn't make, make it, but there are 4K plus um, devices with Android operating system. So this means that there is a lot, a lot of devices with very, very strange and different resolutions. Of course, the range here is like hu huge. But if you wanted your website to, be, to look great on all of these resolutions, uh, you could actually kill yourself, because this is impossible, to optimize the, your website for every device that there is. So uh, a responsive website is much better because you don't have to do it, because it, it's done by itself, actually, of course, when it's well developed. 
the second advantage is that Google officially recommends responsive sites. It means that when somebody's looking for your product or your service, uh, it gets uh, higher in search results because only because it's responsive. Uh, it has been proven that responsive websites get 11% uh, more conversion. Um, I think it's mainly because people actually can use the website on their mobile phones, which they do, and they do it often. And of course, you have to prioritize the content on the website so that the whole message is much clearer to the, to the user, and uh, they don't get like ton of text so that they can have to read uh, in order to understand what you're doing, because you have to shrink it, shrink the whole communication to the very main uh, sentence uh, explaining the whole, excuse me, the whole message. Fortunately, it was the end of the slide. Okay, so what is the data that you can collect actually from the user using your website, uh, or like in general? You can get location, you can get the type of device, you can get the time of the day, of the year, how long uh, there is for the, what's the proximity to payday, this is also a very important question. Uh, what are the search keywords, visitor frequency, customer history, referring URL, sessions, behavior, and this is actually the data that you get in your Google Analytics. That's pr probably a bit obvious for you. But what about this? Can we get the information? Like what's the weather in Amsterdam right now when my, a user is using my website? Of course we can. This is not very hard to do. Uh, there is a special, th there is a Chrome browser extension that actually can detect your facial expressions. Of course you have to install it, but it can be pre-installed and then Google can have information about your reaction to certain websites. This is also a very powerful data that can be used uh, for, for, for design, for, for designing special elements of the website or for special resolutions uh, and, and different devices. Uh, there has been some research done uh, which says that out of the movements, clicks, scrolls and any interactions that you can do on the website, uh, you can actually detect when people are getting bored. So isn't that the perfect moment to give you a promo code for something when you are bored? It's like, it's the best time, right? To, to use this, this, these kind of moments to actually boost sales for, for your e-commerce. I'm sorry, I'm going to get back to e-commerce because that's where I'm coming from. Uh, you have to forgive it. Uh, what about when you have your offline and online channel? You have offline stores and you have an online store. Combining these two date, these uh, information together gives you like a tremendous and powerful information. Forty people, forty percent of uh, customers use in-store Wi-Fi to browse the retailer's website. In-store, so I know the exact uh, place where my my customer is, and I can actually use this data like for everything that can boost sales. 50% uh, are looking for deals, coupons and offers online to use them in store. 46% of people buy products in store after using a mobile device to research. This is ROPO effect. Research online, purchase offline. Or there's also a, a different effect, uh, a reversed ROPO, research offline, purchase online. Th these are combining uh, and it gets like a lot, think of the computer, you want, want to buy a new computer. You're not just going to, to a, a store and buy a computer and ask a sales assistant for a computer. You search for it online and then you go, you know what you want and then you go and buy it. <coughs> or you just go and buy it and see how it looks in a physical world and then you buy it online. This is the effect that actually everybody knows from their experience. Um, so why not use this data for this design purposes? Uh, I think, and Joel Harvey also thinks, that high-performing mobile websites will look more like mobile apps. Uh, because the, the data that you can collect is like tremendous. And uh, you don't really have to have apps, but you can swap, like, uh, you can switch the features that apps have into the website. 
I put them into the website. Okay, there are, uh, have you heard about Nielsen usability heuristics of design? These are rules of what a software, uh, um, an e-commerce website or any software actually, uh, have to fulfill in order to be useful or user friendly. Uh, these are uh, heuristics for design, especially for mobile. Uh, there are 11 of them, but we will focus only on two of them. And mobile users do not really welcome constant disruption. So even though you are wearing your, you are having your smartphones with you all the time, you don't really want to pick them up and check for notifications all the time. All the time, you want them to be accurate. So the, the, the design, design should fit into your, your world, your lifestyle, and it shouldn't bother you. So that's what these two uh, points are actually saying. And I think this is important in the terms of uh, designing for, co for different contexts. Um, I, I'm sorry, and of course, the fact that you are actually going everywhere with your computers with your devices, even to the bathroom, uh, means that it gives the designers a whole new opportunities to give you great interactions, like helping you with your life. But it should help, not bother. The bathroom. <laughs> or the toilet. <laughs> um, actually, uh, the biggest concern about beacons is that uh, they are a great technology, right? Disruptive technology, my favorite word. Uh, disruptive, uh, but actually I am really afraid that when uh, they are going to become more popular, you are going to get notifications all the time. You are going to get a notification that you s did this step. And I don't think that people want this, and this is going to kill beacon technology if people won't actually understand that this is stupid. Because technology it's, itself is great, but you, it has to help cannot be just for, for the sake of technology. Okay, so you have probably heard about um, the, the rule that uh, people are using desktops when they are sitting on, at their desks, at work, let's say. Uh, they are using tablets when they are home, uh, for leisure time probably, and they are using smartphones in town. This is, of course, true most of the time. But I think that contextual model is much more appealing here uh, because it says not about the location of, of a user when he is using the, the device. It's not talking about the situation, but the intent. So what I want, what I want to use this uh, particular device for. So I want with a smartphone I want to check things. I just want to get notifications in a proper time about things that I'm interested about. Uh, with tablets, I want to immerse, so I want to get to know more. But with desktop devices, I want to manage stuff, ma manage the experience, go through the whole experience. So that's why when I'm looking for a new dress, which happens very often, uh, I'm going through the website or the e-commerce website uh, on my smartphone. Then I I don't use tablets, sorry, I'm a bad example, but, uh, but I buy it actually on desktop. Uh, because uh, many, many websites are so shitty that you cannot buy, uh, buy a dress uh, via a mobile phone. So this is uh, all about the intent. The problem that is, or? I think in general. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's quite a thing. <laughs> uh, I, I don't agree. No, I don't agree. Uh, maybe for dresses. Yeah. Maybe for dresses, yeah. When I do an online purchase, it's really, really rare. rare. On, a, on a tablet or a phone. Sometimes you even cannot do this. Like, you're, you're pushing the button, you're trying to, to press it, and it's not working. So how can I? But I try it for three times, and then even if it's possible, I just leave the website. Because I don't really want the dress anymore. Uh, I don't want it. To, I don't want to buy it on the mobile phone. <laughs> but I, of course, want the dress. And because so, of the, I want to manage things. You don't want to depend a lot on data or whatever, and you don't want to type on your phone. Yeah. However, with the website, 
That's true, and that's exactly what Slack did here uh, in the example, because when you are signing in to Slack, your Slack account, uh, well, when you are signing in in general, you have to type in the password, which is probably or should be quite complicated. Uh, they did something like this. You, you don't have to type in the password, you just have to click so that they can uh, send you an email that you are getting the notification straight away on your mobile device and you just click the link and you're signed in. So this is much easier. It takes like maybe three more clicks, but you don't have to type in, like you don't need the keyboard, keyboard, you don't need to do this difficult stuff. Uh, but let's get back here, because what you said, what, uh, what's your name, sorry? Adam. Adam, uh, I, I totally agree with you. But I think that this is going to change in the near future because uh, if mobile websites are going to get better and better, the managing phase is going to go that this direction. This is probably not a very near future, but it's going to become this way very soon. Uh, this is uh, Alibaba CEO, who in a few months ago showed Actually, I don't really remember where, but he showed a feature which lets you verify your payment on the mobile device with a selfie. So you don't have to type in the password or the code from a text message so that you can verify the payment in an e-commerce website. You just have to take a photo of yourself. Uh, this is not working. This is beta, but still, uh, this is something. This is the future, let's say. Have you seen the film Face Off? High value individuals, this could be a problematic feature. <laughs> 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 yeah, why doesn't fingerprint work yet? Yeah, because now you can see if you have a belt to your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that fingerprint is also great, right? But, but <laughs> that's what he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But not whether they point to your ball. Uh, shoe uh, filtering case. They they've done a great work uh, designing their their fil filtering feature because uh, when you are scrolling the website on uh, the e-commerce because that's what they they are uh, when you are trying to narrow down your search results. No, when you are trying to search for a product, they are at, uh, rec recommending and encouraging you to uh, narrow down the results as much as possible through the design. Of course, you can show, look at the whole of the products uh, straight away, but scrolling them and going through all the search results on the mobile phone is much harder than on the desktop devices. That's why they encourage you more than on the desktop devices to narrow down the search results. Okay, this is Amazon Dash, uh, this is actually just a button, you probably know it, but I'll explain. This is a button, button that is a feature, let's say. When I click this button, Tide, uh, Amazon uses this one-click payment to get uh, washing powder to my home, because they already know my uh, payment data, they know my address, so only, I just have to tell them that I want it and they send it to me. Uh, so this is the feature that is... <laughs> this is the feature that is context friendly, let's say. Yeah, because uh, when I'm doing my wash, uh, washing, uh, and I know, I find out that I ran out of a washing powder, uh, this is the time when I want to order it, and I, and I don't want to remember about it, you know, when I'm in front of the computer. So this is great. So why not putting the same feature, but not physically on the washing machine, but in your smartphone? It's like it's so simple. But of course, it's it would be great only if this feature would come up when I am near my washing machine. That's what make would make it great. But I haven't seen it. Maybe you have this kind of feature. 
Okay, so as uh, people act differently when they are using mobile devices, they have different uh, intent. They want to do something quickly. They have a le different level of distraction. They are probably more distracted than when sitting in front of a desk using their laptops. Uh, and you, when you get to know your Google Analytics data and you try to compare uh, the behavior of people using desktop devices and mobile devices, you can see that the bounce rate would be higher, the page views would be lower, the time spent on the website will be lower, will be uh, shorter. Uh, th they just behave differently and you have to find a pattern for you because I w cannot tell you about a general pattern at all. So what you can use, actually what you can do, is the personalization of uh, the content of the website basing on the data that you can gather and as you can see there is a lot of data that you can collect. Uh, so you can, uh, A-B testing here is like uh, obvious, but um, you can do it for different variables. You can use the device, you can use the search word, you can use the, the weather. It's up to you actually what is business relevant for you should be uh, used for personal, personalizing the contents. So now a uh, small task for you. Do you know Crate and Barrel? This is uh, okay. So this is a bad example, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll try. Um, Crate and Barrel is a home furnishing retailer. Uh, they have a lot of offline stores in the U.S., but they also have online store. They use the in-store Wi-Fi. Uh, in, 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 in their stores, yes, in their Wi-Fi. And what would be, what da which data would be business relevant for, for them? How do you think? They sell like sofas, pillows, uh, so very important stuff for men who are <laughs> very uh, present here today. Geeks. <laughs> I'll say it if you don't want to say it, that's, that's fine. Geeks. You said you said they sell to a certain type of men who are here today. No, no, no! I just said men. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use oh, the G word. Right? <laughs> 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 Geeks. Geeks. I didn't use the G word. Of course, men shop with a purpose, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's do it for men. That would be great. Yeah. You you want to you think that you say that uh, women sorry men uh, for shop purpose, yeah. for a specific purpose. What would be the purpose? Uh, well, they probably know before they get into the shop. Okay. Uh, how do they know that? Uh, no, no, that's what men are like. I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you give an example? Uh, by, uh, by shaving uh, foam. Shaving foam. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure Wait, if Marlon's selling that, but I'm not sure. Okay, we, you want to buy a shaving <laughs> phone in, uh, in an offline store or in an online no, store? No, online store. Okay, but you are in a different brand or in a, in a store, offline store, where you can buy a shaving phone. What would be great for you and your smartphone? To get a better deal, let's say, to make it more easy for you. Uh, I'm working my, my ass off yeah, here. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, so 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 what I want is an app that tells me where it is. <laughs> in the phone. <laughs> yeah. 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 still like toothbrushes, tampons, like I've still got that one. Like that's really good. Yeah. Location service, that'd be good. Out for getting it set. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, and your your idea was because you said something. Uh, get a discount. Yeah. A discount. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so probably something that would come up uh, to my mind when if I would have designed it would be for you the app if you're using the in-store Wi-Fi, uh, which probably you are, uh, you and you are entering the website of Crate and Barrel, which is selling shaving foam <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. Uh, then you would ha you would get the prompt to uh, to get the in-store map so that you can 
easily find your shaving from. Yes. But you can, but you will get this feature only if you are using an in-store Wi-Fi and you are in the location of in a certain location. Yeah. Yeah. That's trouble. too Why? much trouble for. Yeah. Stupid. For who? Stupid. Well, well, IKEA uses internal Wi-Fi. Yeah, you can uh, shade it so you don't get uh, all the signal. <laughs> well, of course, I'm not saying that this is perfect for everyone. Yeah, but this is the opportunity that the store can get, right? You don't have to use it, but some people will use it, and it might boost some conversion. Yeah, so uh, it's not something like you have to do in order to buy to buy a shaving foam. Of course not. You have to scroll down, uh, or the location doesn't have to be this exact, uh, this accurate, right? They just have to check if the look. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, okay, good. I heard caffeine is a good uh, program to block that. To block that? Yes. Caffeine yeah. keeps your screen on. Yeah. Yes. Ah. But it's not your mind. Okay, I thought that it was about the whole conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, so, I would so like to know whether a product is available in your store. Where the product is... No, weather, weather. weather. Okay, I want yeah. to have a certain weather. type or brand or whatever. Yeah, this is also very, very good information. Kind of uh, this is omni-channel. Yeah, this is, this is pro providing uh, a lot of information. Click and, and click and collect feature, which is uh, for a customer very intuitive and it's something that they would like to have. But for, uh, we are actually launching a click and collect feature for our, one of our customers and it's like a tremendous lot of work. <laughs> and uh, that's why Omnichannel is going to be there, here, but in a few years. You need a fast database, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yes? How do you detect that the person is connected to through the Wi-Fi of this specific source of the or in, 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 in you have service. what's in store? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, source ID. And that's like ID range on this. No, you know this at least of your stores. You can have the same website. How do you pass this data to Well, you could just even inject header so you know that they're standing next to bathroom articles. That wouldn't be that hard. Write this down. I'm so proud of software circuits right now. You can have an NFC tag if you want to draw the connection to the website. Yeah, this is way easier. Or Beacon or something. But the, for the Beacon, you need the, you need an app. Well, you have to make people install the app, and that's no. the biggest no. biggest barrier. You need NFC. for Beacons. For Beacons, yes, yeah, for Beacons you have to have an app, yeah, so that they can get notifications when they are near the beacon, right? So you cannot do it. You can, you can, you can like, download our app and QR This is not that, that simple. Uh, Believe uh, me. But, uh, there are often uh, only returning customers who are who use it. And, uh, yeah. uh, most, cost, most people just use the mobile. Yeah. Yeah. So they know what product they have, they know where they are. <laughs> well, I don't want to put <laughs> ev uh, 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 an app of every retailer that I go to. Well, it's like it's cluttering my screen. <laughs> like I don't want this. Oh, you have nine. Use a different. Yes. <laughs> 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 okay. You, okay. Uh, do we want to go through another example, or do you think you get the whole idea? Getting quite close to the end of the. That's time, so I don't know what you have after that. I, you, I'm finishing right now. Okay. These are the tools that uh, that can uh, actually help you. Of course, Google Analytics as itself is uh, a lot, and you can use it a lot. But of course, there is a software that you can use for. Basically, you should use, look for a software for A/B testing because they are gathering all the information that you, the basic information that you need, and you can easily change the website for different. Uh, Samples, right? For for different experimental groups, that's what it should be called. Um, yes, and I think that. Do you have any questions for what I was saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, did you actually come from Poland, or do you live here? <laughs> no, I, I I live in Poland. Yeah. We came from a. Yeah. 
Not only, but yes. Um, <laughs> what are the other things? <laughs> Well, well, you are very special because yeah. the first, first week uh, we figured out that we want to come here and then we uh, actually oh, did some business again. business meetings here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm This is, uh, these are all uh, software for A-B testing. Ah, so, nice. yeah, so this is Visual Website Optimizer is the one that I, that I know the, the best of all four. But uh, you can either change the contents, you can change colors, uh, you can change uh, what actually the user can see depending on what they have done before. And you will build your whole site for what? It's, it's cloud-based. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, uh, is one of them open source? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Personalize. I didn't use it, uh, but I'm not sure that this is open source. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Thank you.